One of the richest exercises we can engage in, uh, spiritually speaking, is to read biography. Um, And of course, when we think biography, one of the first things we would generally assume we're talking about is books written by people about great people. Um, You know, in the Christian uh, circle, um, Chuck Swindoll years ago wrote lots of great biographies on like Moses and Joseph and those things. Great, great uh, um, biographies by a great writer. Um, But what I'm talking about here, those are of value, by the way, that's wonderful. But what I'm talking about here more specifically is the rich wealth of biography we have in the scriptures themselves. Uh, Really, from the very beginning, uh, uh, from the introduction of man into the world, we have the stories of countless people that have uh, walked with God or walked away from God, Uh, those who have lived in every kind of an experience, uh, those who have... Um, been kings, others prophets, others shepherds and such. Uh, To see their lives unfold in Scripture uh, gives us a a wonderful sense of what it means to walk with God in real life, beyond the level of theory uh, and such, but really putting feet to what it means to walk with God. Uh, Far from an academic exercise, it becomes the daily living in the experience of knowing God's presence and learning to trust Him learning the hard lessons that he leads us through, there's a lot to be said about reading about the lives of those who've come before. And of course, uh, one of the uh, most wonderful uh, places where we can find a succinct uh, mention of a number of people uh, in one place is in what's called the Hall of Faith in Hebrews chapter 11. And we're not going to go through all of that today, but I would just commend it to your reading. But we read about people like Isaiah or people like Abraham, people like, um, you know, all of these different prophets that are named throughout the, uh, the book there, um, it's, it's, or throughout the chapter. We're encouraged as we look at the lives of those who have um, not only lived their lives for the sake of the coming uh, kingdom, the city whose builder and maker is God, the coming of Messiah one day, and these things. Um, but not only living for that, but even even dying. Uh, some uh, dying for their faith, some simply dying in faith, looking ahead to the promises. But this is a wonderful passage of Scripture to read, and I'd encourage you to go ahead and read it uh, all the way through chapter 11. Again, it's uh, it's well titled, uh, called by many, the, the, um, the Hall of Faith. And as the heroes of, of the faith throughout the, you know, the Old Testament and such. Well, the New Testament, of course, we have um, some tremendous biography as well. In the Old Testament, we have people like the kings. We have people like uh, David, of course, uh, the pinnacle, the king by which all other kings in Israel are measured. We have um, Josiah, um, wonderful revival happening under Josiah. We have Hezekiah, uh, a man who laid out... Uh, His concerns, his fears, the literal letter from his enemies before the Lord and sought the Lord and got on his face before God and God delivered him and the people uh, that night. Uh, It just in dramatic fashion. We read about, again, heroes like Moses and such uh, who lead the people of Israel, people who were ill-equipped in and of themselves, but yet called and and equipped by God to go and uh, to ultimately serve him. Matter of fact, Moses, interestingly, started uh, as a child growing up in Egypt, of course, his story. Um, being taken into Pharaoh's household, his uh, daughter raising Moses. And, um, uh, but Moses started, interestingly, just, I guess, a brief glimpse of a biography. Moses started with all the best training in the world in Egypt, but it was after God had um, brought him personally out of Egypt, out into the wilderness for all of those many, many years, 40 years or so. He's 40 years old. He's kicked out of Egypt for 40 years, and ultimately then he comes back and leads the children of Israel for 40 years. But those 40 years in the, in the wilderness or the backside of the desert uh, where he essentially learned, he unlearned a lot of things in e- that he learned in Egypt and instead learned the very simple trust uh, and relationship with God. Tremendous insights into so many, uh, (coughs) as we look at people's lives, tremendous insight into what it means to walk with God. Of course, I was starting to allude to the New Testament. Uh, Look at the book of Acts, and we see Peter, we see Paul, we see Philip, we see Stephen. Uh, We see all these wonderful, um, uh, you know, uh, first century uh, progenitors to the Christian church as they uh, ultimately uh, provide the seed. Uh, you know, the, as, as the expression goes, the blood of the martyrs is the seed of the church. Um, and so as we look into the scripture for these biographies, not just great men outside of the scripture, there, there can be a lot learned from the lives of many people who've lived even outside of the scripture. 
but to glean from those who lived in the Scripture and experienced what it meant to walk with God from God's own Word itself, as we look into His Word to learn about those who learned their lessons the right way or learned their lessons the hard way, again, those who walked with God, those who walked away from God. But the crescendo of this chapter I just mentioned in, in uh, 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 Hebrews chapter 11, really the, the, the purpose of the mention of that ultimately finds its apex in chapter 12, verse 1. Notice what the author to Hebrews says. Therefore, again, hermeneutical principle, if you see a therefore, you want to stop and take a look at what it's there for. The therefore in this case is because we have all of these uh, witnesses to look uh, back on all of these lives and biography of those who have lived before by faith. Therefore, we also, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, these heroes that have gone before, and uh, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily ensnares us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. And he goes on to encourage them, saying they've not yet struggled to, 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 uh, to the point of bloodshed in that. One of the, the benefit, one of the great benefits we get from looking at the lives of those who've lived their faith before us uh, is the, the understanding that it is possible to press on in the midst of difficulty. At the end of chapter 11, there is mention of, of a, a nameless multitude who, uh, who uh, were persecuted and killed, often in gruesome ways, uh, for their testimony in faith in that. And, and the encouragement here as it kind of reaches again its, its, its mountaintop here in chapter 12, is that these people were all looking ahead to a promise. They died for the sake of what was yet to come in faith, knowing that God one day was going to fulfill his promises. And ultimately then it points us to the person of Christ who himself suffered to accomplish uh, the, those promises, to bring those promises to pass through his own suffering and such. And so the encouragement then is to look at all of this cloud of witnesses that were surrounded by, all of those who have gone before in their, in their faith, and then ultimately to look to Jesus, who is the author and finisher of our faith, the trailblazer who ultimately cuts the path, and even the one who brings it to completion. Uh, he becomes our ultimate example, who, taking on all of that persecution and suffering through the hands of sinners, yet nonetheless, he did so for our sake, and he finished his course and his race. Uh, Paul, at the end of his own life, said that very thing. I have run the race. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. The idea of having accomplished that which was set before him for the sake of God's glory. Getting to the finish line and finishing strong. This is the encouragement that we, that we gain from those who went on before. And so let me encourage you. Uh, this is just really just some brief thoughts on this subject today as I was reading through this passage. Um, there, there is a lot to be gleaned by learning from the lives of those who are walking the path we're walking on. Uh, maybe those alongside of us right now as we learn from them and how they've gotten to where they are, mature in the faith, or whether we look at those who've gone before, that, that, those examples that are set, who, that, that ultimately lay the groundwork for our own confidence in finishing in faith, learning to walk with God, trusting Him every step of the way, learning from their successes, learning from their failures, learning that oftentimes failure is really not fatal because God's grace, whether in the Old or New Testament, God's grace is there to pick up those who stumble and those who fall. Abraham, the great father of faith, had a couple of tremendous lapses. Peter, uh, you know, uh, one of the one of the the twelve hand-picked disciples of Christ himself, one of Jesus' own closest disciples and friends, had an epic fail, but yet was restored by the Lord and went on to become a tremendous pillar in the church. And so there is, uh, again, at the risk of sounding redundant, there is such uh, wealth of blessing and benefit to learn from those who've gone on before. No Christian was designed to be an island. No Christian is supposed to be isolated from other believers. And so however it is that you can glean whether it's uh, through books, whether it's obviously through the Scripture, as we were just saying, looking at the lives of those in Scripture who, who walked with God, or whether it's having friends around you uh, that walk with the Lord and encourage you in your faith, older believers, seasoned saints who can impart to you and help you to walk the path, uh, the narrow road that ultimately leads to everlasting life. 
Uh, This is the beautiful privilege of the believer, that we never actually walk alone. Christ himself is with us, but on top of that, he often gives us tremendous uh, blessing through the examples, the relationships, the record of the lives of those who've come before to encourage us. Um, It's a very heavy read because it's, it's all about suffering. But there is a book called Fox's Book of Martyrs, F-O-X-E, apostrophe S, Fox's Book of Martyrs. And it uh, describes the sufferings of the saints from the time of the apostles, the the apostles themselves, and the the way that they ultimately died uh, for for their testimony. And then ultimately through the centuries, uh, telling the stories of so many who, like the apostles, uh, suffered at the hands of those who would persecute them for their testimony. It's uh, again, it's a heavy read. It's not. Uh, it's a, not a light Sunday afternoon read that's going to be uplifting in terms of the details of the stories. But it is a tremendous encouragement to recognize the grace that God imparted to those who were on the uh, the threshold of eternity in those final moments, giving them all that they needed as they prepared to meet Him. There's testimony in that that's worth gleaning from. So just a, a thought, a suggestion, but. But do take advantage of the opportunities to, to dig into the lives of others in, 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 uh, in the Scripture, those who have walked with Christ, those who maybe even your own life you have the blessed privilege of knowing and being able to glean from. It's a rich, there's a rich reward in this, and so let me encourage you toward that end. Father, we thank you for the goodness that you demonstrate toward us in giving us relationships with people, giving us the written testimonies of those who have come before the cloud of witnesses that we're surrounded by that encourage us to press on. Uh, And of course, as we look to the person of Christ himself, our own Savior, the Lord, who ultimately leads us, uh, both in, in, in plain reality, he leads us, but also by example. Help us to learn uh, from the one who ultimately gave himself freely to the hands of sinners to be persecuted, that he might ultimately fulfill his purpose and the race that he had ultimately been born into this world to, to accomplish. Help us to learn from that, to understand that the road is not always easy, it's not always smooth, but it does lead us to everlasting life. And the pitfalls that come along the way, the, the, the temptations, the persecutions, the things that come along the way, uh, when seen in their proper context, become, uh, as Warren Wearsby said, bumps upon which we climb. And so thank you, Father, for the examples that we can glean from. Help us to do so. Uh, Certainly, if we walk with the wise, we ourselves will be wise. So whether it's literally with those around us or whether it's through the lives of those who've come before, help us to be wise and learn from those who've come before. Thank you, Father. We praise you. We thank you. We bless you that one day we'll be in fellowship in heaven side by side with that great cloud of witnesses as the communion of the saints is full there in heaven. Thank you, Lord. We praise you for all of this, your daily goodnesses. In Jesus' name, amen.